Hi, I'm Claire from Wild Ginger Running and this is my review of the Kerber 5 litre and Kinder 10 litre running packs from Harrier. So first of all, what you're looking for in a running pack is for it to be comfy for running a long way. You want to have a lot of easily accessible pockets up front and maybe some ones you can access from behind as well. And you don't want it to be too heavy and the price needs to be right as well. And that last point is where Harriet really, really does score because this five litre running pack is only 54 pounds and the 10 litre version is only 59 pounds. So these are really brilliant prices, about half the price that you can get a lot of other running packs on the market. Market. and I would say they're just as comfy and just as many pockets in all the right places. So slight caveat here, I did help the guys from Harrier design these packs. About a year ago we went through, we looked at all the running packs that I have and I've been testing over the years and then we kind of threw everything together. So there's a lot of great features on these running packs. Um, so that's just a little caveat there so you know where I'm coming from um, and you know why I rate these packs so highly. So I'm going to go through these two packs, the Kerber first and the Kinder, just to show you some of the features and then I'll show you the fit as well. So which pack should you go for, a five litre or a 10 litre? This can be a difficult choice for some people, especially for beginners, but what I would say is go for a five litre pack if you're a beginner or if you just want a day pack um, just for running about not carrying too much stuff. And then the reason you'd want a 10 litre pack is just to fit more stuff in. So if you're going for a really long way, like an ultra, maybe a hundred miler, some people fit everything they need if they've got really lightweight kit in one of these for a hundred miler. But say it's in um, the winter maybe, so you need to pack some more layers, you've maybe got a GPS tracking device that the race organisers asked you to carry, there may be mandatory kit as well from the race organiser that you need to stash in here. So that is the reason that you'd go for a slightly larger pack. Weight wise, there's not a lot of difference between these. Um, this is a small, the five litre Kerber, that weighs 233 grams, so that's really, really light. This only weighs 10 grams more. So it's a medium, it's the Kinder 10 litres, and it only weighs 10 grams more. So that's 243 grams. So weight-wise, there's not a lot in it, but if I take a 10 litre pack, I am inclined to pack 10 litres of stuff. So that is why I will always try to pack a five litre pack if I can, because <laughs> otherwise I'll just end up carrying loads. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the Kerber 5 litre pack first of all. Um, so, let's fill it full of stuff and you can see what room there is. So, let's talk about water first of all. So, there are two pockets available for your water. Um, you could take two bottles. I often take one bottle of water with me because often I've got a GoPro in the other side. So, that would be my setup. Um, it takes two soft bottles up front and it also has a compartment and a clip here for the hydration bladder as well. Um, so that goes there um, and hydration bladder tube can poke out of the bottom just here or you can have it coming over the shoulder tube there coming out there and then threading through the various bits of elastic on the way down. There's a little bit there to clip it into. So I usually use a soft bottle setup and I've got here a Harrier 500 milliliter bottle. Um, it's full, so it does take a little bit of uh, shimmying, shall we say, to get it into the pocket, but um, I'll show you how it fits. So it fits into this middle pocket here. Um, there we go. Ah. Not too bad. So there it is, fitted into the middle pocket there. You've got a little pocket just here for some gels or a key or money. And you've got a bigger pocket here, this elasticated number just here that you can shove gloves and a buff in. Um, I'll load it up just um, in a mo. Um, this goes around the bottle like so. And that's so that when you have drunk a bit, it doesn't just fall right to the bottom of this pocket. <laughs> um, this tube 
is secured up here like this and this bottle is is really good you can actually push this down to turn it off and pull it on pull it up to turn it on again so um that's really good and it's angled as well so you can drink um you can turn it away so it doesn't kind of uh, bash you in the face a little bit so that's bottle in one side um so that is how i'd usually wear it and then i would usually put my gopro in the other side like so then as I mentioned before, got various things like a wild ginger running buff that could go in here, like so. Um, and then we've got some gloves. They could go, oh, they could probably go in there too. It's a really big stretchy pocket. This pocket has also got a bit of silicon on it just there. So that's really cool if you wanna use a map uh, like this, just a little bit of a folded map so it doesn't slide all the way to the bottom. It just keeps it in place like that. Um, you could also pop your compass down there as well. Say so you're doing some kind of navigation event. These ones at the right at the top here, I would put some like smaller gels in there, like if you've got electrolytes or something like that. Um, in this side, the pocket has an emergency whistle on it as well. Um, so you don't have to remember to put it in your first aid kit. And you can tuck it away so it doesn't flap around. Um, this side, the reason I've not put the water bottle in that side is because there's a rather nifty um, pocket which is coated with the durable water repellency and that is for your phone so if I just open that up like that you can see there's a pocket there for your phone it is a, a little bit tricky to if you've got this pack fully loaded it is a little bit tricky to get the phone in and out I probably would put my phone more likely to put my phone in the front pocket just there but if it's raining this pocket is a really good option because it is um, water resistant so that is a really nice touch there and the phone just slides in there like so and then you just dig a dig down a little bit to find the zipper and pull it up and um great thing about zip pockets is that you know that that phone in there is going to be really secure so that is super handy then let's move to the side pocket so on each side there is a ginormous a really good big mesh pocket with a nice zip here and the zip tags are really really long so you can really easily grab them and you can pull them down even when you're wearing big gloves so that's really handy the only thing is they can sort of um, flap about a bit and if you haven't got much in the pack they can kind of um, sometimes flap on you and be a little bit annoying so um, what you can do there is just pop the top in there and then just use the small bit of the zip to do it up so just sort of tie them away a little bit like that <laughs> um, so that's not really a problem um, at all so I don't know maybe you want your head torch in this pocket here and then on the other side is a very similar pocket it's made of mesh so that is great for breathability if you're doing a hot weather run so i would just grab some food maybe and put it in this side some gels like bars loads of food these pockets will take tons and tons of food you could be out for days um so that is the front all loaded up the other thing that i want to talk about on the front is the chest straps so the chest straps are um really really nice and secure really stretchy um uh, these buckles are really easy to use they're big enough so that you can use them with gloves on no problems at all they move up and down as well so you can um you can move you can pull this out and move it to any of these other toggles there and the same with this one here as well so you can move it up and down the frame of the rucksack like that and the other nice little nifty feature about these chest straps is that they've got a little bit of elastic on the end of them so if you've got them really really tight say you've got not as much in the pack and you want it a little bit tighter you can then roll it down it secures it like that so that you don't have a really long end bit 
flapping around. This is where the two packs differ quite markedly from each other, is the back of the pack really. The fronts are very similar. So um, on the Kerber 5 litre, you've got this amazing um, sort of uh, hand through pocket here. So if you're running along, you can reach around the back and you can stuff a windproof or a waterproof there and it's just really easy to access it. So you can do this on the move like that and you can just have it dangling there. You've got a nice big back compartment there. So what I would tend to put in there is stuff that I'm not gonna use all the, all the time. So I've got my um, battery, battery chargers for my GoPro. They would go in there right at the bottom. Maybe you want your waterproof in there as well and maybe your windproof on the top so you can get that out easily. There's a Velcro closure so things aren't gonna fall out. There we go. And then we've got this final pocket just here, um, which is a, a sort of a side back pocket, which you can reach just about there. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you can reach that. Um, so maybe first aid kit, it's actually huge. I mean, you could put another layer up here. You could put like a waterproof or something, depending on how much you've already got in here. Um, but maybe your first aid kit, because the first aid kit isn't something that you'd use very often, hopefully. But if you want to use it, you do want easy access to it and you want to know where it is. So maybe the first aid kit can go there. So the pole loops are on the back here. So it's really easy to use. You just pop the poles through these loops and secure them basically. These are a pair of Harrier Helvellyn poles and you just pull those tight like so for the poles. So that's our pack fully loaded. Let's try it on. Okay. Right, so this is a small and this fits me really, really well, well loaded down with stuff, which is great. I probably could also fit into uh, extra small as well, um, but at the moment I'm nearly eight months pregnant, so my boobs have got a lot bigger. So Kate from Harrier has sent me this small pack rather than an extra small, which I was bothering her about at the start of the summer. So if you've got a smaller chest, you might want to go for the extra small. Um, if you're a larger person, then the sizes upwards um, will be fine for you. But there is a, very excitingly a Stanage 10 litre pack, which is going to come out soon, and that goes up to XX. XL. So if any bigger runners, do keep an eye on the Harrier website for that information. Um, so the pack uh, fits really nicely. There's a good fit around the neck. Um, I can't feel it rubbing or anything. Um, and it's just a really nice fit. It doesn't bounce around when you run. There's also another really nifty feature on the five litre pack. Um, these are little toggles that can attach your race number. So here's one I made earlier. Undo the little toggle, pop your race number on, pop the little toggle back on, secure it, and then find the other one. And there you go. Your race number is attached to you. And that's just great because it means that you don't have to put a safety pin through your t-shirt or through your waterproof jacket. Um, and it's just always on top of whatever you're wearing. Um, the only thing that is definitely not something I would like is the poles will definitely bash when you run if you have them in this position. But yeah, that's, that's the only thing. I wouldn't use these pole holders because they would bash. Um, the other thing is it is quite difficult once you've got this on and once you've got loads of stuff in this pocket, it is a little bit difficult to get your phone out um, because the zip only comes down as far as this pocket here. So um, you have to sort of go into the pocket. You can leave this little bit coming up here and, uh, and then get the phone out there. So, yeah, I suppose it's not too bad. It's not, not too bad at all. But if it wasn't raining, I would just keep the phone in this front pouch here for really, really easy access. That's the Kerber 5 litre. Let's now take a look at the Kinder 10 litre pack and uh, see how that one differs. So the Kinder 10 litre from Harrier um, isn't very much different on the front at all. In fact, I think I'm safe in saying 
it is completely the same. Um, so you would only need a bigger pack like this if you wanted to put more stuff in the back compartment. And the back compartment is a little bit different, so I'm gonna show you that now. And instead of a Velcro closure at the top, we now have a zip. So that just means that things are gonna be a little bit more secure in there and a little bit more water resistant. Obviously you put stuff in a waterproof bag, um, dry bag if you were expecting heavy rains or even if you're not, it's Britain after all. So uh, we've got this bungee as well, all the way down the back um, and we've got some different places that we can put our poles. So first of all, let's just load up the back first of all. And um, there's um, again, a separate compartment here for your hydration bladder if you want to use hydration bladder rather than soft bottles up front. Um, but then you've got this absolutely ginormous back compartment that you can fit anything in. So say you're going for a run in the winter and you want to take a pair of like maybe these little micro spike things with you. Um, this is the kind of extra capacity that you might need. So... So let's pop them down the bottom there. Um, we've also got things like a survival blanket, maybe. Um, we've got uh, waterproof, um, we've got uh, extra layers, things like that. I usually put my things in one of these sort of Ziploc bags rather than a dry bag because they're see through, so you don't have to remember what's in each bag. Genius tip. And they're really cheap. And I have a massive skin fin. So, that goes in there. Um, you can um, compress this down and then seal the bag, uh, but if it's not raining, uh, if you're not forecast for rain, then you could just put it in this and leave it. It's just easier to get it out. Um, so there we go, another top in there. You've probably got your, you've got your first aid kit as well. Remember the first aid kit's not just for you, it's for anybody you might find on the trail and you might have to be a bit of a hero. So I often carry a first aid kit, especially if I'm going into the mountains. Um, and then for me, I've got a load of um, like portable chargers and, and wires there for my filming equipment. So I will always take that as well. So then not, oh, it's just got so much room in here. So I could still fit, oh, what else might we take? We might take, an insulating layer as well so let's get that in this is not necessarily in the order in which i would pack these things and again i would put this thing in a waterproof bag as well um so yeah there's room in there's still room in there to spare so if you've got mandatory race kit and anything like that little survival shelter bivy anything like that then that will fit in there it's a very generous 10 liters um, but it just means you might take 10 litres of stuff, which might not be good for travelling light. Um, so then you've got this bungee on the outside as well, which is super, super useful for putting any extra layer in as you're going along. So it just means you've got easy access to something like a waterproof like this. So you can just, even from behind, you can probably manoeuvre to do this or your friend can do this for you can just shove it in there, make sure it's securely fastened, of course, and then you've just got that extra bit of storage space just there around the side, which is which is really useful. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on and check the fit. Oh, poles, 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 poles. So um, on this bigger pack, there is a place for poles um, down the sides of the arms here. So one on each side, we're gonna just put them on now. And then we're going to put it on and check the fit. Just a little toggle down here. Pop the pole down. Secure it. And then there's this little toggle just here. Just this band looper fabric there for the top of the pole. Same on the other side. Right, let's put it on and see the fit. I've been sent a medium of this one. Um, so this might be slightly bigger. Oh, this will be slightly bigger. <laughs> I don't often carry this much stuff if I can help it. So I more often use a five litre pack. But this 10 is good, as I said, in the winter. Or if you've got to carry a lot of stuff with you. If you're doing multi-day perhaps and you've got to carry a lot of food, this could be really handy. Okay, so the fit is really, really good. 
So if you're my size, you could probably get away with anything really from, from a small to a medium. Um, this uh, fits really nicely. Um, it, it doesn't um, constrict you on the neck area or anything like that. Um, and it doesn't bounce around when you run. So having watched David Attenborough's really scary program, Extinction, I'm now adding an eco and ethics side to all my reviews. So for Harrier, they're definitely um, thinking along the right lines. I know that they're also looking at some recycled materials to make t-shirts from just lately. Um, and they pride themselves on just making a really good quality durable kit so that it lasts for a long time. And all of the packaging that they use is recyclable as much as possible. So they're definitely thinking along the right lines there and um, big up to them for looking into those recycled materials more and more as well. Verdict. Well, what can I say? 54 pounds for a five litre running pack that weighs 233 grams and only 59 pounds for a 10 litre running pack that weighs only 10 grams more. I mean, this is brilliant value. It's got so many easily accessible, usable pockets up front. It's got a way of securing poles for the 10 litre pack, not so much for the five litre pack, um, but maybe you're not going so far when you're using that one. Um, and the, the storage is impressive. The quality is great. The price is wonderful. So absolutely brilliant. I would definitely recommend these packs, especially to beginners, because you don't want to be spending loads and loads of money on trail running gear when you first start. And the ethos of Harrier is really good quality kit for less. So you can't go wrong with either of these running packs from Harrier, I would say. If you enjoyed this film, click like and subscribe to Wild Ginger Running YouTube channel if you don't want to miss out on any more gear reviews, interviews with top athletes, exercises and inspirational places to run off-road as well. See you on the trails!